Hello everyone and welcome back for another figure skating video and today we're breaking down one of the most exciting moments to happen in figure skating this past year. Ilya Malininen quad axle has been landed and we are going to break it down, take a look at what is the difference between what's making it work, what has made it not work at the most recent national championships, and what to look forward to at the world championships coming up in a month from now. But let's get right into it. First looking at Ilya's quad axle that was successfully landed in the Grand Prix series. Let's take a, a quick look at it in regular speed before we break it down. And we'll see right here he gets that bracket entry, huge lift, and just almost absolutely unfathomable for me as a young skater one day hoping to get my triple axle. And now we've already gone past that. We're landing quad axle now. Um, you know, he's the only one in the world currently doing this, but you have to imagine that he's going to be setting a trend with others who are going to be wanting to land this quad axle. So let's take a, a quick look at exactly what's going on as he gets into the air, the type of lift he's getting, his rotation speed, and a couple of the minor techniques that he's employing to make this happen. So as I mentioned earlier, he does the bracket entry to give himself a little bit of a timing, maybe a tiny bit of extra GOE on the side. But I think more than anything, it's a rhythm thing for him, right? He wants to get into a certain rhythm. And I think that bracket, he's been doing it probably since he's a little boy. And that's just built into his timing and it makes a good entry for his step into this quad axle. And right here you can see he's got right over his left side, he takes a takeoff that's maybe slightly more wide. I would say this is pretty common technique that you would see in Russian skaters. This reminds me a lot actually of Yevgeny Plashenko and his triple axle takeoff. In fact, that might be a video later comparing Ilya's to Yevgeny's uh, axle takeoff. But right here you can see he gets a slightly bit of a wide right leg swing before he's going to get it in front of him and allowing him to make this weight transfer happen. Um, but he's trying to get a little bit of extra momentum, basically, by going slightly wider um, before he hits that destination. And he's going to get up into the air here. The camera is not perfect. Some of these frames are going to be, um, you know, skipped by a little bit. But you can see right here at 0.2 seconds in the air, he's got an incredible rotational axis going on right here and this is exactly why he's having success you know he hasn't even fully gotten over his right side yet but you can see within these next couple of frames he's going to have that right leg completely down and now you can see that access right there is just perfectly over that right side he is going to just rotate completely over his right and leaving him in a great position when he gets to the landing and this has been the big breakthrough that he's had versus everybody else that's attempted this but hasn't quite gotten it. It's how tight he is through the ending of the rotation usually. And you can even see a little bit here. He's starting to go through his checkout process. He's using what we like to call here the eagle claw. He's grabbing his knees right here together and squeezing his thighs while lifting his left foot so it doesn't hit the ice. He can land this on one foot while still maintaining almost a perfectly balanced axis over that right side. All of his balance is coming down in a concentrated right spot over that right side, allowing him to be able to sneak out of that landing. And wow, it's, it's just absolutely gorgeous. Oh, again, almost unfathomable to think that quad axles are now going to become the standard. Now let's compare this again to his Nationals quad axle attempt, which didn't go over quite as well. Um, you can see right here, you know, he's got that same entrance. He's going to use that bracket to help him get that timing. Tara Lipinski made a really interesting comment about how he didn't quite get the lift on this one. And as you can see, as we go back, we look at the previous video, we see we have a measurement of him getting to about definitively 0.86 seconds in the air. So I once made a comment that based off of the rotation speeds we had seen, we would need about a full second in the air. Well, he's rotating faster than I had calculated that by, and we're going to get into that also in a minute. But it just goes there right to show you, you're going to need a quite a bit of lift in order to get that. And 0.86 seems to be 
what he's going to need in order to be able to get that. And the lift you can even see as we get a little bit closer to his takeoff, we're gonna take a really focus right here on this left foot and this left toe and the calf muscle and just how he uses that, not only to help him give that little bit of extra lift, but also help him get control over that lift and get over to that right side by the 0.2 seconds that we were talking about earlier and how he's gonna get able to get that nice perfect axis. So now we're gonna take a look at the quad axle from Nationals and here he's getting into it. Same takeoff, but you're gonna to start to see almost immediate differences. Right here, he's already tilted to his left. It's almost like he's trying to move his body to his left past where his right leg has gone and that's going to be problematic when we get to the 0.2 seconds that we were talking about earlier. And let's see if we can actually get that frame back. And you can already see just from his initial descent, he's tilted just a little bit more right off the beginning. And that right there is probably going to make up that difference that Tara was talking about on the broadcast. That just that little bit of lift that he missed out right there is going to basically doom the jump, unfortunately, for him. So he's getting in there, and here we see at point two, a very different axis than the one that we saw in the previous jump. There's a you know a clear tilt here, and we're going to go ahead a few more, and he's still maintaining that tilt, which again he lost a little bit of lift on the lift into the jump, but he's also going to be losing a little bit of his balance as he's rotating because he's not fully over that right side. He's slightly off his rotation. And you can start to see it manifest itself a little bit too as we go through each of these frames. Every single one is just ever so slightly different. And this one right here actually shows me exactly the difference between the two. You can almost see there is a balance between his two sides here. He's almost perfectly distributed left and right, and that's gonna be problematic for him come landing time. He needs to land on his right leg, and he has way too much weight over his left side right now in order to make that one happen. And again, you can go back to the takeoff. You could see it right at the very beginning how he didn't quite get all the way over to that right side. And as a result, He's still very tight through the end. You know, you got to give him a lot of credit, but you can see there he is. He's going through the eagle claw process, but we're at a different point in time. We're at point eight. He's missing almost a tenth of a, about half of a tenth of a second of time. And now you can see on that landing, even though it's not the best angle to be able to see this, you can see all the snow coming up over his uh, right leg, but it's on the left side of his right leg, which is telling you, he landed over his inner edge a little bit. You want to be landing these jumps on your outside edge. And that was part of the problem. The other part is he's about a quarter short. And that also is a little bit of a problem when it comes to landing on the inside. When you're short on your rotation, you're a lot more likely to be on the inner edge. And when you're on the inner edge, you're actually fighting the flow of the blade. It's almost like it's gonna get caught. And you can kind of see that, right? Ice is flying everywhere. He ends up on the back of his blade not quite the uh, landing that he was hoping for. Still an incredible attempt. I mean, he's landed it now, so now that's kind of the standard. We expect him to land it every time, but this was still an excellent attempt for a not so perfect takeoff. And now we're gonna take a quick look at the side-by-side -side comparison. You can kind of look and see the difference between the two of these and his takeoff. And it's, it's pretty evident, you know, right right from the beginning. Let's watch it one more time at regular speed. You can just see the one on the right. He just is just a little bit more balanced in the air as he's going to take off. And you can, like I said, you can see it as early as... I would say here really sh illustrates exactly where things start to become problematic and it's so subtle it, there's almost no difference between the two of these except for 
he's slightly more over his left leg. And, you know, angles play a little bit into this, but you can look at the shoulder and his knee and see that they're over his foot, right over the ball of his foot, which is most important, which is going to allow when he's going to use his calf muscle to raise up onto the toe pick is going to give him a little bit more balance. And you can see right here from this initial takeoff, he's just got a little bit more lift on that right side. You can also see his foot has come through a little bit more, uh, which I think is underrated, right? As we're trying to drive these jumps higher, we're trying to get into our peak rotation position a little bit sooner. That right foot coming through sometimes gets sacrificed, but it's still really important. Um, you can see it made its way through a little bit more there, but even by here, you can just see clear difference in the rotational axis. And that's going to follow. It's going to haunt him for the rest of the, the jump, unfortunately. And each one of these frames, you can just see he's trending toward success or a slight miss on each one of these. And like even here in this frame, you can see he even stayed in a little bit tighter. I mean, again, hundredths of a second we're talking about, but just enough, just enough. Um, one last thing I wanted to take a look at was his peak rotation speed. We saw right here that his jumping height is, or the time he's spending in the air, I should say, is 0.867. That's really a rough estimate. I would need a better camera for a more accurate um, measurement of that. But we can say that it's somewhere in the 0.8 and above range, which is really important for us to be able to figure out how quickly he needs to be rotating once he gets into that peak rotation speed. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at that. And there's one thing that really stands out about him. I mean, that air position is so immaculate. There's almost no space whatsoever. Let's go ahead and get into when he's fully hit that position. And I would say... Like right here should make a pretty good measurement for it. He's clearly fully in his peak rotation. Um, ankle's tight. We've got ankle contact going on. He's established his rotation position. We can now take a quick look at where he's at in the air and how quickly a single rotation is going by. And I used to say like elite rotation speed back in the triple days. Like if you could get point to every rotation happening at point two, you were in pretty good shape. Quads have changed the game. That's now getting a lot, you know, under 0.15 is really where you want to be. And even maybe even closer to 0.13, depending on some of these jumps. So very, very little time in order to complete these rotations. Let's see how quickly he's getting around. And we can see right now he's facing front tortoise. He's actually ever so slightly ahead of us. So we're going to have to try and figure out where we can accurately say. So it hasn't happened quite at point three, but I would say by the next frame for sure. And it looks like we missed out on this frame potentially. Eh. Yeah, I would say it happened between point three. You don't have this frame. But it was somewhere in between point three and point six. So we can probably say we can put a, a 0.15 rotation speed, which I would say is kind of like the new elite speed that we're hoping to get on these jumps. And let me get that one back. Let me get one more look at this. Let me see if I can find a secondary opinion. We're actually going to see if we can go... Try it from right here. Yeah, so you can see he clearly makes it in under 0.16. So that reading of between 0.13 and 0.16 is pretty accurate. I think we can kind of safely say with a little bit of margin for error, 0.15 seconds per rotation 
in his peak rotation speed. And that's important to distinguish because your takeoff is going to be a little bit slower than that. And your landing is going to be a little bit slower than that. So being able to get as many of your rotations at that peak speed is really is what is the other factor is what's allowed him to land this quadruple axle and become the first person on the planet to be able to do this in a major competition. Well, thank you very much for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe and leave a comment below. If you are looking for some more figure skating analysis, please let me know in the comments and I would love to break down all kinds of different movements that we see in the sport of figure skating. But until then, I will see you next time.